Um, I am your instructor today. My name is Alexandra Tracy, and I'm so excited to be joining you um, at the Silhouette Studio today. I am, by profession, I'm a high school teacher. So I guess, I don't know what's scarier, teaching all of you right now or 30 high school kids. I'm about to find out. This is my first time teaching at the Silhouette Studio, so I'm really excited um, to be here with you. Um, today, we are making this awesome bag, super trendy right now. At the high school, I teach fashion design. Um, and so we learn about trends and what's popular in the world right now. Um, and these canvas totes are trending right now. Um, there's a big push for being kind to the earth um, while also having a 70s influence. So that's kind of what I was going for. I wanted something that was groovy, a little bit funky. Um, while making it so you can pick up your groceries in it or pack it for the beach. Um, I pack mine for church with my little one-year-old. We put all of his toys in it um, and he knows that's the church bag. That's where his toys for church are in a reusable tote like this. Um, so we're going to get started today. I have some options for you because I don't want this to just be me teaching you. I want us to all be involved together. So first off in the chat, I want you to tell me um, whether you want to see the project done in white or black. I picked up these totes at Michael's. They were super affordable. It's a great option for crafting. Um, they're just a plain canvas tote. Um, I think they were about $1.99 a piece. So an awesome option for crafting this summer. You can do it with kids. So I want you to tell me in the um, comments, white or black today. Okay, the black swinging. I'm excited about that because I made the sample in white. So we're gonna do something a little bit different. Um, we will get the black unwrapped. It's totally up to you on whether or not you want to um, press your bag before. Maybe you already have, if you're making this right now along with us. Um, let me find a garbage can. Oh, right underneath. Um, I did press my sample just because it was a little bit wrinkly and I wanted that um, design to stick as best as it could. So I'm just going to slide under here. I'm using a heat press today. This is something that's new to me too. I've never used a heat press. Um, I always just use a regular iron at home. I recommend turning off the steam though, if you're using an iron. Okay, so we're just going to press this down. Like I said, this is totally optional for you. It's just sort of prepping the design before we get started. Like I said, I'm new to the heat press. So while this is pressing, okay. Um, I think that's going to be good enough for right now. So we will use the heat press again later. Um, so we have our bag all prepped. Next thing we need to do is we need to log on to our Silhouette software and download our design from the store. Now this is awesome. It's a free design. You don't have to pay for it. The Silhouette store has tons of free designs um, for you, our designers. So how to get to the store, you can get to it through the URL. I'm going to get to it through the Silhouette Studio. So let me share my screen with you. Okay, it looks like you can see my screen. All right, so we are gonna, I already opened up Silhouette Studio right here. If you're new to Silhouette, this is the Silhouette Studio. This is where we make the designs or where you create, sorry, this is your creative zone. Um, up here in the top right corner, we have four different tabs. We have design, store, library, and send. Um, we're gonna click on store right now because that's where we need to go to get our design. So it takes us to the store, um, tons of designs here for you. To get our design today, I think it's actually on a header. 
Yep, free. it's the free design of the week, but I will give you the design ID. The design ID is 408055. If you want to, if you want to write that down, if you're not making the project right now, you're, if you can't download the design right now, you'll be able to find it later just by searching that design ID on the design store. Um, so what we need to do is we're going to add this to our cart. If for whatever reason you can't get it right now, you can also favorite it and come back to it later. But mine is in my cart now. Um, I'm, I'm going to hit proceed to checkout. And it says success, this item has been delivered to or added to your silhouette library. Um, so I can actually leave my web browser right now. Back to my silhouette library. And if you don't see it showing up in your silhouette library right off the bat, you can see down in the bottom left corner that my library is syncing right now. So it's going to be coming in, it's going to be loading it for us to grab. Sometimes it can take a minute. It is usually relatively quick. I'm not, oh, it is loading right there if you can see it. C A right here. The thing that I love about um, this library view is if you know the name of your design, you're able to search it up in the top right corner. Um, as you can see, I have a lot of designs I've downloaded, lots of designs I've created. And so it can be kind of tricky to sort through all of those and try to find what you're looking for. So I recommend um, when you download something to always know the name of it. And it's really quick to just search it and open it. Um, so we have our design right here in the store. Be a kind human right here. Um, just a couple of things. If you want it to make it, if you want to make it a favorite design, um, you can click the star right there. That also makes it easier to find for later. If you're not going to be making your design right now. Um, if for whatever reason you want to share this design ID with your friends and you can't remember it, you can't find that piece of paper that you wrote it down on. That happens to me all the time. Um, these little arrows down here, if you click on that little square in the bottom left corner of the design, it brings up the name of the design um, and also the design ID. It's kind of grayed out, but you can still see it right there, 408055, if you need to refer to that later. Um, so now that I've found it in my design store, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click it. And it has put it right into my um, studio for me to create now. Now you're the designer, you're the creator. You can do whatever you want with this design. Something that I really like to do when creating a design is changing my colors on what I want the design to look like once I've cut it with heat transfer. Um, so how we're gonna do that today, first off, once you download the design, it's all grouped together. If I go and click on a color in my palette, it's going to turn that whole design one color. I don't want just one color. It's not as fun. We want, we're going to cut it with multiple colors. So I'm going to Command Z to go back. Um, and I'm going to push Command Shift G. And that's going to ungroup my design completely. You can see it made all these little squares. Um, around the different elements of the design. So that makes it so I can change the color. Looks like the smiley face, we gotta do it one more time. Okay. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the different colors that I want to cut. This is totally optional. You do not have to do this. Um, this helps my organized brain stay more on track. It helps me realize what I'm cutting with what colors. And it kind of gives me an idea of what the bag is going to look like, what the design is going to look like before we put it on the bag. Um, and so what you need to do is just click on each item individually. If you want to make everything one color, you can hold down shift and click them all at one time. So I know 
that I want all of the words on my design to be one color. Um, I think I'm going to do a turquoise color for the words on this one. Um, and then I'm going to opt to make the outer parts of the smiley face turquoise too, the actual space. Um, so you can see that's kind of my plan that I'm doing so far. The words and the smiley face details are going to be in turquoise. Um, next, I'm going to do the actual circle of the smiley face. And to me, smiley faces are yellow. So we're going to do a yellow circle for that. Um, I think I'm also going to opt to do the daisies yellow, just to kind of keep that theme with the bag. And like I said, this can be super messy as it might not even be the same yellow. I think these two right here are different colors of yellow that I clicked. Not a big deal because all it's telling me is that those six flowers in the middle of the circle are gonna be yellow. So I know when I go to send it that all of my yellow stuff is there. Um, if you want to make this bag a little bit more complex, you could make the middle of the flowers a different color. So maybe I'm going to add some purple. So there is my finished design. I think it's super fun, really on trend right now with the pastel colors um, and kind of exactly what I was going for when I had this idea in my head. For the sake of the class, um, you know what, I think we will do the three colors. I have three colors of vinyl, so we'll do the three colors with it. All right, I have my design now. Um, I am gonna kind of go backwards now. So I ungrouped all of these together. Now, if I move something, it's going to move just my circle. I don't really wanna move just my circle because I'm gonna cut all the green in one piece. So I'm gonna push Command Z to go backward. Um, and now you can push Shift and select those different items that you want to be grouped together. And instead of doing Command Shift G, we're just gonna do Shift G, or sorry, Command G. As you can see now, the whole design moves together. Everything I want green moves together. Um, I do recommend when I cut this original design, I did cut it in the 12 by 12 size. I'm using the Silhouette Cameo today. So that's the biggest that the Silhouette Cameo cuts. Um, that's why I did it. I wanted it to be a focus point on the bag. If you want to, you can make it smaller. I think I am gonna make this one a bit smaller so it fits under our heat press today. So you can just select it and drag um, all at one time. I recommend selecting all of it and then dragging so you don't have to resize everything and try to make it fit once it's all different sizes. All right, so I have them all disconnected now. I'm gonna move my green over to the right side of my screen. Just gonna hang out there for a little bit. Now I'm gonna select all my purple pieces together. And we're gonna group those, so Command G. And we're gonna drag the purple down to the corner. Oops, don't wanna move that. Um, and then even though I'm just keeping my yellow on the screen right now, I am going to group those together because in the future, I'm going to have to move all of those. And I want my design to stay the same um, if, I can, if I can keep it the same. All right, so we have our yellow over here. We have our green over here and our purple over here. If you go in closely to our design, you can see that there's a red outline along all of our shapes. Those are our cut lines. 
Um, so that's just telling us where the machine is going to cut. Um, if for certain designs you did not want things cut, there's a way to turn that off in Silhouette Studio as well. All right, I think we have most of what I needed to show you for now. Yep, just doing a little refresh for myself. All right, I am going to, well, I guess we'll get it to the send panel. Um, so like I said, at the top, we're gonna cut our yellow first. At the top, we have design, store, library, and send. Send is based, it's the cut panel. If you want something to be cut, you're gonna click on send in this top right corner. And you kind of see that cut line even more pronounced now. We have that thick red line, that's telling us that wherever that red line is, is where it's going to cut. Um, some things that you need to do before you cut are make sure your settings are correct for your machine. Where we're using heat transfer, it has special settings. We don't want it to cut through the heat transfer. And so we need to make sure our studio knows that we are cutting um, the heat transfer. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to this drop down menu at the top. Right now, mine's set to vinyl. So I'm gonna click on that. And this is another awesome option where you can just search instead of having to scroll through the hundreds of different options that the um, Cameo cuts. So I'm gonna click on heat transfer and there's all of these different options. Did you all know that there were so many options of heat transfer that you could buy? Um, we today are using smooth heat transfer. So we're gonna select smooth heat transfer. Um, I think everything else looks good. Sometimes I do just bump it up one for the blade depth. Um, personal preference, if you want to just stick with the default settings, they are the default settings, so they do work. Um, but I just like to be for sure that that cut is going to happen. I'm not going to have to recut it. So I think all of our settings look good. I'm going to leave my screen now and kind of show you what's going on in the studio right now. So we stopped sharing. Perfect. All right. Um, like I said, we're going to start with our yellow heat transfer. All of my heat transfer I'm using today is sizer heat transfer. Um, I think I have purple too. Yeah, I just have a little piece of purple. This is an awesome option for heat transfer that you can buy at Michael's. When I went in, they had so many different colors, so many fun colors. This was actually the only brand that I could find in these cute pastel colors that I was going for. So we're using Sizer. Um, I think last week at Michael's, it was 50% off. So you can always find a good price on it. We're going to start with the yellow. I'm going to show you two different ways to cut heat transfer today in class. The first way we're going to do it is um, cutting matless is what it's called. So we all know that with the machine, traditionally you have a mat that looks like this. Um, usually what I do is I just cut a 12 by 12 piece of heat transfer, put it on my mat, um, and that's how I cut it. Recently, I've learned how to cut matless, um, and it has been a game changer for me just because it saves a step. It saves a step in the process. But, well, yes, so we're going to start with yellow. Sorry, I was getting ahead of myself. We're gonna start with yellow and cut matless. So the first thing we're gonna do is we have our cameo right here. Um, this little drawer pulls out to cut matless. That is the purpose of this drawer. Um, and we're gonna fold this up and fold up these flaps right here. These come folded down in your machine. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna fold them up. Based on how big your roll is, earlier today I was cutting with nine inch vinyl, so it's set for nine inch vinyl right now. We want to set it for 12 inches because that is how wide our heat transfer is. So we're just gonna slide this out. Um, and it's really nice because it clicks into place. That's what I love about the Cameo um, and Silhouette, my Silhouette machine is that it clicks into place so I know I have everything 
in the right spot. It's not going to slide around. Um, when you're cutting with heat transfer, there's two sides. There's a really shiny side. You can kind of see that in the camera, how shiny it is. Um, and then there's a side that's more dull. When we're cutting with heat transfer, we want the more dull side to be down in the machine. So I'm going to load it accordingly. Um, and when we cut matlist, we're also going to feed it through this slot in the machine. Um, mine is set to 12 inches, so I'm just going to push this down. Hear that click. Good. All right, so I have um, this knob is now set to 12 inches. You push down that little lock. Traditionally on your machine, it's going to be set to 12 inches. Like I said, we were cutting nine inch vinyl a few minutes before class. Um, so that's why it was moved over to the nine inch panel. Right there, um, but we're gonna move it back to 12 inches for this class. All right, now to cut matless, you're just gonna put it underneath this rod on the machine. And it's okay if it's not a completely straight line. This one? I guess it needs to be clicked in one more. Oh, yep. So I, I didn't have a set tool. All right, so we're gonna line up our heat transfer right here. And then, oh, yep, thank you. Oops. Okay. We do want to make sure it goes in correctly. All right. Okay. Um, so that is our mat. I don't know if you if you could all see at home when you are cutting and moving this bar. Um, you need to flip that switch down. I had it, I had left it switched down. So it would have um, created sliding with the heat transfer. So we just got to flip that up. And I'm going to reload it just to make sure it's underneath. Okay, perfect. Um, so now our machine is ready to cut. So we're going to go back to our send panel. You might still be there if you didn't leave it. So with our send panel, um, we are ready to cut our machine. Okay, I will share my screen just so you can see what I'm doing over here. Share screen. All right, so we have our send panel right here and we've set everything up. You need to make sure your machine is connected. So if if this silhouette cameo um, and picture right here, it's a picture of it. If it doesn't say ready, it's going to say unavailable. If that is the case with your machine, you're going to go down to this other picture of a, of a machine. Mine has a nine with a circle because we're in the office right now. So there's a lot of machines. Um, available, but mine is this Cameo 4 right here that's plugged in. So it says ready, I click it, and it connects to um, the Silhouette machine. All right, I think I've gone over everything, and I think we're ready to cut. So all I'm going to do to cut is just push send. This is super important. When you're cutting with heat transfer, it actually cuts backwards. So if we don't cut it mirrored, our words will end up backwards. Even though we're not cutting words right now, I'm still gonna cut it mirrored for the sake of um, keeping everything uniform and the same with this design. Oh, yep. Thank you. All right, I did forget, since I'm cutting mat lists, we need to go to this panel and it says cutting mat, Cameo, um, 12 by 12. We're not cutting with a mat, so we do need to turn that off. All right, does that look good? Okay, thank you. All right, now I think we've worked out all the kinks. We're ready to send it. 
and we're going to send mirrored. So you can see it's cutting. We don't need the map. I was a bit short on my roll. Okay, looking at our design, I can see that it did cut off the top since um it was a bit crooked on the top so not a big deal um this this obviously i can't use right now so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to feed it down and you know i don't think there's going to be enough yellow to cut the rest of our design mat list like that mm. Actually, there is, but can I cut it when it's just this much? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. So we can cut it still. We're just going to flip it around and cut on the other side. Not everything always goes according to plan A, right? All right, so we're going to reload it into our machine. And I think what I'm going to do is I will show you on my screen what I'm going to do. I'm just going to move the design down ever so slightly. Yeah. Oh, I think we're good. I think we'll just redo the whole thing. All right, so we're going to send it again. Carmina said, um, just like the classroom, you got this. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Carmina. All right, so we're going to send it again, send it as mirrored. So this time I made sure to leave plenty of room at the top so our design didn't get cut off. I'm sorry, I was wrong. That was actually Terry. And then Carmina said, it's all good. We've all been there. Yes, yep. And then Shaquina Sh Sh said, sure have. Yep. And totally, if you don't feel comfortable cutting matless, it's something that's really new to me. You can just cut on the mat, which is what we're going to do with our next design. But if you want to challenge yourself, go for cutting matless, try it out. All right, something that I like to do before I unload my design is to just make sure it cuts. So I just take my weaning tool and start to pull up the heat transfer a little bit. And it did, looks great. Um, when cutting matless, you're going to push this down arrow and feed the um, heat transfer all the way through the machine. Okay, I'm gonna leave myself plenty of room on this side. it so you can see okay all right um there is a paper cutter back here or just a cutter i don't know you're probably cutting key transfer or vinyl if you're cutting matless um so these flaps back here on your machine you're going to push those down that's going to hold the heat transfer in place and then you're going to push down on this lever and slide over now, super important that you lift up those panels for these tabs right there. If you don't lift those up, your machine will make a really loud, clanky noise when you start cutting again, um, which we don't want. And in the moment, if you forget to do it, you won't know why your machine is making that noise. So we are going to put those back up, turn our machine back around, and we are ready to continue with our design. Um, this little extra that I did, I'm just going to feed it backward. 
and take it out of the machine. All right, that was cutting Matlas. That was an adventure, right? For all of us. Um, we are not gonna cut Matlas for the rest of the class. So we are going to fold up our um, part of the machine that is required for cutting Matlas. So these tabs, I just folded right down. And then this piece, it can seem a little bit tricky to fold down, just kind of wiggle it until it goes nicely. Um, everything is folded back down in our machine, so it's just going to slide up nicely back into our machine. Clicks in, you don't even know it's there, right? All right, that was our yellow pieces. I'm going to weed everything once we have everything cut. So we are going to move on to purple now. So with the purple, this was my piece that I had left of purple. So this craft could be, it doesn't require that much heat transfer. So it's a great option if you have one piece of heat transfer left that you didn't know was in your closet, right? Or it's just laying around. I'm just going to stick it onto the mat. Remember, shiny side down. And that is pretty sticky. All right, so that is how that piece of heat transfer is fitting onto my mat. It is a little short on this side. So when I go and I grab those flower pieces, um, I am going to shift my design over a little bit. So we have our, our um, mat ready. We're gonna load it into the machine. So it's really similar to cutting matless but I'm going to tell you it's a little bit easier. So don't be scared of cutting on the mat. Um, we're just going to line it up with this line over on the left hand side, feed it in and it's ready to cut. So let's go back to the screen. And we don't need our yellow anymore. So we're just gonna drag that over to the side. If you want to, you can delete it. I like saving all of my designs though. So now if I go back and I wanna make it again, it's already all cut apart how I want it. And um, I don't have to redo it. So I'm gonna save that over there. Um, and I'm gonna pull these purple pieces over. Um, with this, I totally understand if you do not want to use that big of a piece of heat transfer for these little tiny purple pieces. I totally get that. Even if you have a really, really small scrap, you could use that instead. For this, for the class's sake and for the placement, just because I want the placement to be right with these flowers, I am going to cut it um, all in one piece. Um, I have that one piece of purple. Looks like I'll still have half of it after this cut. So I'm just gonna move it over a little bit because I know my mat was a little short on the one side. We're gonna go to send. Oh, and I do have to tell my machine that I'm cutting on a mat again. So on this page setup panel, I went from none to the Cameo 12 by 12 inch. All right, everything else looks good. We're gonna send it. It's still selected on heat transfer, which is good. That's what we want. And we can send again. So this cut is going to be super quick because it's only cutting those little circles. Super fast cut. To unload it from the machine, we're just going to hit this down arrow right here. And we're gonna pull that off of our mat. All right. Lastly, we need to do our green, which is brand new. I haven't even unwrapped this yet. So 
something important to note, if you've never used heat transfer before, the instructions do come on the outside of the heat transfer wrapped up. So if you've never used it before and you feel like you might need a refresher, don't throw this away for later. So I know I don't need a full 12 by 12 piece for this cut, um, but I think it is a bit bigger. Yeah, I'm gonna cut it about the same size as this yellow piece. So you could cut it really precisely and measure. I'm just gonna eyeball it though. Um, I teach family consumer science classes. And so I'm a big um, seamstress and sewer. Um, and if you sew, you know, you don't always measure, right? I mean, they say measure twice, cut once, but do we actually do that? I, I actually should because I have to recut things and redo things all the time from my sewing. But luckily heat transfer is much more forgivable than fabrics. All right, we're gonna stick that onto our mat. And remember our shiny side is down, the dull side is facing up. Smooth it out. And just like we did with the purple, we're gonna load that back into our machine. All right, this is our most complex cut of the day. So it's gonna take the longest versus the others. I'm gonna go back to my design panel, drag the flower or drag the centers back over. Um, and we're gonna bring this green guy back in. Um, and yeah, yep. Um, but looking at this, Let's see, my height is nine inches. And I cut the heat transfer exactly to nine inches. What do you say, McKenna? Should I cut a new piece of heat transfer? It might, cut off the H a bit. It might cut off the H a little bit, but we're just gonna roll with it. Crafting um, is never an exact science, right? It'll give it some character. All right, so we are going to go to the send panel again. And we're gonna send it just like we've done with the three other cuts, two other cuts before. This is the most important one to get mirrored. If you don't mirror this one, you're gonna have backwards letters and we don't want backwards letters. Um, from Barbara, she said, how did you separate the words from the designer? How did you separate the design when you opened it? Yes, perfect, great question. Um, this is probably the thing I do the most in my silhouette studio. Oh, yep. Sorry. I'll share my screen with you. All right. So once we have everything back together, well, we won't do the middle right now. Okay. So we have this and this. When you download the design originally, it comes like this, it's all connected. To disconnect it, make it so you can change the colors, move things around, you're gonna do Command Shift G. If you're on a Mac, I think if you're on a PC, it's gonna be Control G, Control Shift G. I could be wrong, um, but Command Shift G is how I did that. Then if you ever want to connect everything again, you can just slide over everything with your mouse and do command G and it moves all together. Any other questions, McKenna? Okay. All right. All right, so that, that cut was done. It was actually pretty, oh, I shut my computer. All right, so that cut is all done. We're gonna unload that. Um, and we're actually all done with the computer. We're all done with Silhouette Studio. So I'm gonna move it over here. And I'm also gonna move um, just 
put my machine down too. All right, we've reached the fun part of the class, actually assembling our bag. Make sure you put the blue paper back on your mat to keep it sticky. All right, now we get to do some weeding, the fun type of weeding, right? It's summertime, you probably all have weeds in your yard, but this is the fun type of weeding. All right, the best way to do some weeding here, let's start with this yellow piece because it's a simpler cut. Um, I'm going to find where I pulled my piece earlier and just hook it. Make sure you're hooking out from your design, not into your design. You don't want to rip your circle area. It's fine to rip the outside. We're not going to use that. Um, and then you can just pull everything around it. Doesn't it come off so nice, so satisfying. That's one thing I love about heat transfer versus vinyl is in my opinion, it's so much easier to weed. You don't have to deal with transfer tape. You just get this awesome, perfectly cut design. It's not ripped at all. Um, and it's ready to go on your bag. So I'm gonna put that up to the side. Um, with my purple, let's see, I gotta find where it cut. Just those little dots right there. I am actually gonna cut so we don't waste so much of this purple. It is kind of tricky to see in your design. We're going to weed this piece. And as you can see, I could have cut it even more to not um, have to pull all of this purple off to just throw away. Okay, so we have that this purple piece right here just has three of our dots. I'm gonna set that up there. Um, and let's find our other purple. It's a treasure hunt to find those little dots on here. There we go, right there. And I still have some purple heat transfer for another project. All right, we're gonna weed this, weed around that. Okay, so we have our three dots there. And now we're gonna weed the smiley face and the words, which I think is gonna um, be the most fun part. Okay, got to think about this, where I want to start. Okay, we're going to weed, just cut this corner right here. Really, if you use your weeding tool for this, it's so much easier to just cut and tear. Especially with a design like this, where everything's really chunky, um, there's not a lot of really intricate weeding. I really find it best to just pull out on your design. If you've never used heat transfer before, um, I remember when I started um, making projects with the silhouette, um, I didn't really understand the difference between heat transfer and vinyl. Um, so if you're like me and you don't understand the difference between heat transfer and vinyl, um, heat transfer will change your life. It is so nice to put on textiles because it is much more permanent than vinyl when, when you're applying to a textile. 
obviously with the name it's heat transfer so we use heat to seal it onto the fabric um, and it just makes it so much more permanent all right i think i do yeah i have some little tiny pieces i need to weed out from the middle um, my family we had a big family vacation um, where we had family come from alaska um, and meet us all in san diego and we all had matching shirts that i was able to make with heat transfer the kids loved it because they were all personalized each one had a different design on them and they were super easy to make oh our h did get cut off that's all right be a kind human it's a great reminder right I love how this bag, you can be carrying around a positive message with you when you're doing it. It would also be super cute to put this design on a t-shirt. Um, even like a little baby onesie would be adorable. There's a lot of versatility you could do with this design. Okay, so as you can see, we have our smiley face. Right now, everything's gonna look backwards. That doesn't mean you cut it backwards. It means you cut it right if it looks backwards right now. I can hold it up for you and you can see it shows up right when we hold it up like that. All right, the final steps of our craft today. We're gonna grab our black bag and let's hope I can figure out the heat press now. You just gotta Give it a little force, I guess, is what McKenna is telling me here. Oh yeah, okay, the handle. All right, um, you have to decide where you want the design on your bag. I'm thinking I'll probably do it pretty close to center right now. Um, and we're gonna do it in three different cycles because we have three different colors. So you do have to do it in different cycles. If you were to layer all of it at the same time, only your bottom layer would be fused to the bag. So make sure if you have other colors, you do it one at a time. I'm going to take my heat transfer. One of the sides is sticky, so it's really easy to know which side you stick down, the sticky side. And I'm gonna put it on the bag, we'll say right here. Okay, push it down firmly. And then in order to protect the design, I'm going to grab just some fabric and put it over the top. On the instructions on the heat transfer, it says you can use parchment paper. I've just used regular printer paper to do this. Um, or you can use fabric. All right, so I'm going to slide that back in. Um, and I think everything's ready to go right now. Like I said, if you're using an iron, totally that totally works that's how i made this one right here um just make sure you turn the steam off do not use steam um the iron settings are on the outside of the heat transfer All right so we're going to press this down um, and i think it's set to 15 seconds is how long it's set for All right. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take a peek to make sure. Ah, perfect. McKenna told me the heat press was pretty slick, but I didn't know just how slick. If you are using an iron at home, I recommend um, being a little bit more cautious with how you peel off the heat transfer when i made this one i got a little impatient and it did pull up some of the design so just make sure it's all stuck on before you lift up um so that's what we're going to do right now it's easiest if you lift straight up at a 90 degree angle um don't be somewhat gentle with it but i can see that that design is stuck on it's not going anywhere 
Perfect. Look at that. I love the yellow and the black. That was a good choice from all of you. All right. It doesn't really matter which one we do next because um, they don't overlap. So I think we're going to do um, the purple flowers next. So I'm going to stick those on where I want them. Stick them on over here. And since this is still the same layer, I can do the two purple at the same time, even though they're two different pieces of heat transfer, since they're not overlapping at all. All right, so we're gonna pull this back out. Put it back on. And slide it back in. So I know we've been together about an hour, um, but really this is a quick project. What projects can you do in an hour or less, right? I did lots of talking. I showed you lots of tips and tricks. You could easily crank out this design as a quick, as a quick project. Maybe a last minute birthday gift. If you know you have the stuff, to, the stuff in your craft room. I took my student, okay, so I'm just gonna peel this up. It's a little bit hot. I took my students, um, me and one other teacher at our school, we took uh, 35 high school students on a fashion field study to New York. Um, so fun, so crazy, looking after 35 high school kids in New York City. Um, but so many of our girls that went on the trip bought totes like this um, and they carried them all over New York City. There were super fun designs that were New York inspired. Um, and then they were able to load up all their snacks, their water bottles, their coats because we went in March and it was still freezing. If you're from New York City, I, it's cold there in March, I know now. Um, and so that's kind of where I got the idea for this bag is they were selling them everywhere in New York and my kids loved them. So that's why I wanted to make one of these with you. All right, the last design or the last layer we've pressed on our bag. I always like to smooth it out to make sure there's no bumps or anything. And you can see how slick it is when you just cut everything where it needs to be on your design. We talked about earlier, if you want to save heat transfer, you could have cut all the letters separately and just place them how you wanted. But I wanted it to look exactly how the design was made. So that's why I just cut everything super quick to assemble that way too. Okay. So excited to see the finished product. We're so close to the end. Okay. All righty, time for the big reveal. Wow, how cute did that turn out? I love it. I love our color choice. It almost looks neon on this black bag. I think it turned out great. I know that I'm taking this bag to the swimming pool this summer. I'm gonna take it to the grocery store and load up my groceries in it. I might even put this design on a t-shirt for myself because I love it so much. I think it turned out awesome. And thank you for joining me for this. Before we go, McKenna, are there any questions? Yes, so Mary asked, um, does it matter what kind of material is over the design before getting pressed? Like would any cloth or fabric work? Um, I would say overall, you want it to be a relatively thin cloth. So I would go with 100% cotton fabric. Um, anything 
this heat press is heated to 315 15 degrees. So as a sewing teacher, I know some fabrics melt, right? We don't want to put something under there that's going to melt. So personally, for me, I would stick to 100% cotton fabrics. Somebody else said, do you only press for 15 seconds for each layer? If it is one color, I always thought you did 30 seconds. With my iron at home, I did do 30 seconds. Um, I am not familiar enough with the heat press to know how long to do it for. It worked great with our design right here. Um, everything came up really smoothly. It was tacked down completely when I went to go lift it. So I think 15 seconds is a good rule of thumb if you're using the heat press. Um, if you're using the iron, I would recommend at least 30. Some of these I even did um, about 45 seconds with the iron at home. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm glad it went mostly smooth. I'll be back next month at the Silhouette Studio for a class, so I hope you join me then. Have a good day.